Welcome to Ixla Knowledge Series on Basic Principles Chapter. My name is Marco and I will be your presenter. We created this short video to help demystify laser personalization topics. We understand that choosing the right laser solution for your personalization project can be an overwhelming and confusing experience. Our knowledge series on basic principles will explain several important considerations to help you to make a better decision on choosing our product for your personalization project. For the basic principles chapter, we will discuss some of the most requested topics in ID laser engravings, such as Laserable materials. This topic will explain different types of materials that are suitable for laser engraving processes. Understanding the differences between fiber and DPSS laser. Which one is more suitable for your project? How do they differ from one another? Performance matters. This topic will elaborate on what should be considered a good benchmark for engraving performances. Let's begin. When we personalize cards with a laser, we do not print them, but instead engrave them. In other words, the laser beam marks the card. This process is not only done on the surface of the card. Depending on the intensity and angle of the laser beam, we can also penetrate deeper into the card body and create different effects and gray tones intensities. This makes the card much more tamper-proof as we physically change the card. For this reason, choosing a suitable material for the card is essential. Ixla can implement laser engraving on various materials. However, polycarbonate or PC is the most recommendable card material for laser personalization in today's World ID standard. Polycarbonate is a thermoplastic material that is excellent for molding and thermoforming. It is known for its strength and versatility. It is used to make indestructible eyeglasses and to protect the surface of DVD, to name just a few examples. For ID documents, polycarbonate includes numerous additional security features. PET and PVC materials can also be used, but they must have additional laserable layers. Usually, they are also referred to as hybrid cards as they combine one of these materials and the laserable materials together. Let's talk about differences between DPSS and fiber laser. DPSS laser, or diode pump solid state, use a crystal as the gain medium and a diode laser as the pump source to excite the crystal. They are compact, reliable, and have good beam quality, making them suitable for scientific, medical, and industrial applications. Fiber lasers, on the other hand, Use optical fibers as the gain medium with a diode laser as the pump source. They have high efficiency, low maintenance, and are immune to environmental changes, making them ideal for industrial applications such as welding, cutting, and marking. They are also more energy efficient than DPSS lasers. In summary, DPSS and fiber lasers have their strengths and weaknesses. Making a choice depends heavily on the application's specific requirements. In ID applications, it can mean a specific reaction to certain materials, which leads to a special customized security feature based on the client's unique requirements. Performance matters. One of the laser usages is for ID projects for different levels of financial and government ID applications. Laser personalization in any ID is a form of consolidated technology. This is because greater access to availability and easier integration of laser sources help the diffusion. Numerous options are now available on the market. One of the most often assumptions our client gives is narrowing the consideration of whether different laser power sizes are the only way to measure performance and throughput. This is certainly not the case. Few factors should be considered before deciding to determine the laser power. It is crucial to understand that engraving or marking is the interaction between laser light and substrate. Laser material interaction refers to how the laser light interacts with the laserable material, such as the absorption, reflection, and scattering of the laser light. 
we can conclude that these two elements generally influence engraving performance. First, chosen laserable material, most commonly PC, PVC, and PET. Material analysis must be done to verify the threshold of laser absorption and define the optimal pulse shape and frequency range. In other words, the optical properties of the material, such as overlay, inks, and pigments, will also need to be taken into consideration. Second, the laser types, which depends on their characteristics, such as laser wavelength, intensity, and duration. We will then be able to determine the laser power and subsequently, the possible speed, which will complete the laser setup and provide the optimal production capability information. We hope you have better understandings on laser personalization and enjoy this basic principles series video. Ixlo will be more than happy to schedule a private consultation appointment to discuss your projects in detail and helping you to choose the best laser personalization solutions. You can contact us at info at ixla.it. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again soon. Have a good day.